Today we are going to discuss Windows command line programming and the two shells on Windows are very commonly used are CMD and with DOS and Bash. Bash comes with Sigwin on Windows. It's a Linux and Unix shell. So let's get started with CMD. So before we can use CMD we need to understand how Windows organizes files. So Windows uh, uses disk drive letters A, B, C, D to put all the folders in and each disk has directories or folders and one thing difference between Unix and Windows is that Windows you'll see folders with spaces document and settings A desktop A is a username so desktop is a folder in which you can put anything you want and files are basically where you store your text or data so at the top level you have your CMD or bash then CMD or bash calls user applications user applications call the operating system operating system call the device driver and device driver access your hardware which could be a screen mouse or hard disk or network so let's see more about it first of all you need to create a shortcut so you right click on your desktop and say create shortcut to CMD and then in properties you need to make sure uh, quick edit is on and insert mode is on you can change the font colors and layout and make sure in the advanced properties run as administrator it's much easier to run as admin because a lot of things won't work if you're not an administrator on windows so we'll assume all through that you're an admin okay. and then so when you say start run cmd you get a windows command from cmd prompt it's, this is Windows XP but you probably have a new one right now so what does it consist of there's a name on uh, no, no, the right uh, top left corner you see the icon for CMD and C colon and then the name command name is CMD top is called a title bar and the three buttons on the right side for minimize maximize and close window and C colon backslash uh, greater than sign is called a prompt and at the prompt you can type in commands so the command consists of a command and options or arguments to the command so cd backslash cd is a command and backslash is an argument so it changes the folder to a top level folder and there's another one out here cd windows you go to windows directory and you say dir dir, DIR means directory system 32 drivers etc that's a folder name you see what's inside that folder you see the drive the, the volume name, the serial number and the directory and the files in it and how much is the total size in that folder and how much space is left on the disk so it's 43 gigabytes are left on the two directories and this thing dot and double dot are directories out here dot is a current folder and double dot is a parent folder so double dot would be drivers because etc is a current folder and that there's a uh, icon out here after C colon windows that black blinking dot is called a cursor that's where you type your command and on the prompt shows your current directory on the right side you see a scroll bar so you can move up and down to the history so windows has a limit and you can set change the limit by right clicking on a, on a title bar and setting how much how many lines to save okay so that's CMD and then your folders and files are there so directory is a tree of folders and each directory can have more directories and files so on windows you'd be c colon or d colon is the top level or double slash will not get into that for windows and on linux the top folder is called the slash okay so and then c colon is the primary disk volume c colon backslash is the root directory and c colon backslash windows is where windows puts its stuff C colon backslash document settings is where it puts your stuff. D E F could be secondary drive, DVD drives, USB drives, and then so basically a volume is basically a hard disk, and then you can divide it into partitions, multiple A B C D whatever, and each partition can be a, a NTFS NT file system. It could be a Linux file system like EXT2 or FAT32 is an older Win Windows 32 file system and linux can read ntfs and fat32 windows can't read linux partition so when you boot into linux you can see your windows 
but when you boot into windows windows will try to format your linux you need to be careful to not let windows format it will ask you like do you want to format unknown files and if you by mistake press format you lose your disk all your data so that's windows way of keeping linux out of any other operating system out of from the computer so linux has disk volumes again like it's under slash device hda hard disk a so hda and then inside that you can have partition 1 which can be c colon the primary boot partition and windows dos partition and then partition 2 is the extended dos partition and then the extended partition you can divide it again into logical drives d e and f and each one can have a different file system file system is the way you organize your files on that disk so you never get to see the file system you just get to see the folders your operating system will provide drivers to access the the file system so here see the boot partition windows there's a d partition which has d e and f then there's a linux boot partition and then there you can have os2 or whatever else is there and then uh, these are non dos os2 bhd and they can be bootable non bootable so you need support from a bios if you want to jump to one of these things or a bios always jumps to c colon and you have a bootloader which will let you select which where to what to boot into and then if you look at the boot partitioning you have this is in linux the way it shows you the things c colon is a fat 32 16 gigabyte windows xp and these are the kind of file systems it's shown in different ntfs fat 32 linux swap uh, fat 32 extended ntfs so all these file systems are on a hard disk okay it's showing you max is the make of the hard disk so file names have a name and extension extension is the dot followed by some few more characters so things to remember when making fold files is basically avoid non ascii binary characters in a file name and it's a pain to deal with uh, control characters because sometimes you can't see them and you won't be able to uh, copy or move files around if they have wrong extensions so extension usually indicate the type of the file readme.txt so three character name comes from dos when dos had a limit of three character extension but nowadays you can have longer extensions jpg stands for photograph and gifs is a photograph mp3 is a audio file avi is a movie file so sometimes you can put photo.mp3 so extension can be wrong but the data is still the same some programs are able to deal with it some not so some programs just ignore the extension look at the data inside to figure out is it audio or video file so other thing to avoid is never use spaces in your file names it's just really bad practice for scripting and then files have permissions attributes they're called permissions you can be readable writable read only execute and then they, there are users and groups on a computer so you are a user you're part of some group and then windows permission will allow you to read write or execute uh, the file of folders and then they uh, they have timestamps they tell you the time it was created the last time it was modified and last time it was accessed the file and the size in bytes so files can be of many different types it can be a text file ascii file it could be a binary file like a program or it could be a symbolic link link points to another file they can also be streams seekable seekable means you can just jump to any part of the file it could be a pipe that means the data comes in somewhere else and you can read or write to it a socket a socket is basically a connection to internet tcp ip or some other protocol or just a lock file so when two programs are to synchronize they need some kind of a flag and one way is to create a file as a lock so then multiple pr files can uh, programs can look at the lock and decide who has the right to do what then a file system so what are paths file system contains folders and files file folders and files have names so th and then uh, your character set decides what kind of file names you can use you could be unicode ascii german and mostly uh, we can manage with ascii but they are unicode files also like on some windows the german version of windows will have german car set and when you boot into it you'll see weird prompts or file names parts are locations of folders and files so one big, big difference between windows and linux is the backslash is a dos part separator on linux it is a slash 
and if you, and it's easier to type in names if you don't use spaces and stuff like that and if you have spaces in your document you need to put a double co uh, double quotes around the string and it's a pain when the script if you forget double quote the whole script will list think a uh, c colon document as one word and a second word and setting the third word unless you have a double quote around it or single quote as a script may desire need so parts can be absolute like c starting with c colon home john cc or relative relative means relative to where you are in the folder so dot refers to the current folder double dot refers to the parent folder and double dot backslash double dot refers to the grandparent for example dot dot backslash readme is the readme file in the the parent folder then what does windows cmd allow you can use the arrow keys to edit your command history you can repeat commands by pressing up arrow to find the old command f7 and f8 you can look for old commands in your history tab will complete the file name of folder so you type c colon backslash w and press tab it will complete to windows control c kills the current command control c is the end of file on unix it is control d and usually on windows is hard to kill command for some reason the killing is not really impl implemented well so sometimes you need to open a task manager and kill processes so for example cd if you just type cd it shows you the current directory in, in, on a windows command prompt cd backslash takes you to the root of the folder and there's a command called mkdir make directory temp it will create a folder called temp and then there's a command called rmd remove directory you can remove folders and if you need any help just search on google or type cd command name slash question mark and uh, slash question mark is an option in this case it, it gives you help about the cd command so cd is an abbreviation for change directory so cd slash d takes a d is an option and then you have a drive letter and a path so it will change your folder name to wherever you want to go you can get help like that or anything so the syntax is you have a prompt and then you have a command then you, these are called switches or options on unix they are called options on windows they are called switches slash and they are arguments to the commands and the, the square brackets indicate they are optional you may or may not have arguments or options and tab completes the uh, so you can press tab re repeatedly till you get the right uh, word completion so you can say on windows it will complete one by one so you press tab it will say cd document and settings you press tab again you get john whatever the username is from the file system on linux it will complete as much as is unique then you need to type in one character to disambiguate where to complete let's look at the file operations file operations you can copy one file to a new file and then you can copy a file to a folder you can rename a file to another file name you can move a file to a folder or a new file and you can delete the file name or a folder delete a file and then uh, to locate folders you can just say dir slash s s means recursive b means bare a means like attribute is directory and g o o so if you're looking for the google data on your f on your drive you just type dir slash s slash b slash ad it will find it and then if you are in doubt you can just press dir slash question mark and show you all the options that are available to you to find some file on your f in, on your machine what you do is you just say dir slash s slash b host it will look in the current folder and, and all the children to find files which have a name host and then you can use wildcards those are star star means any character so you can say dir slash slash b star socket star dot star so it will match any file name that has a socket in it okay that's slightly different from the linux version we'll look at it later and if you want to save the output of a command you just use this uh, greater than sign the command name greater than sign and a file name so the output of dir will go into list docs.txt and if so e every command has two outputs one is the regular output and one is the error output and if you want to save the error output you can say the command name gcc some file name and two two means the error output and save it in error.txt so that's how you save and you can combine both in one line also like dir big fact dot c 
2 greater than error and then continue with greater than say log.txt so it will save both in the same command and then you can open it in an editor to see what went wrong so if you want to copy all files you need to use wildcards say so star star means any name it will match anything ending with dot c you can copy all c files to temp there's algo star dot c it will list all files which start with the name algo and end with dot c and then you can, if you're looking in all folders then you can put slash sb algo star dot star so cmd has, has these wildcards star means any character zero or more question mark means exactly one character so if you have a star dot question mark it means anything starting with a and then any name followed by a single character dot and a single character extension like dot c dot h and then you can also have star and then b a star b dot d that means matches a b dot d a x b dot d and any anything between anything starting with a ending in b dot d star dot star matches everything question mark dot question mark matches character dot character then we have regular expressions so that comes from unix grep command but it's everywhere in Perl, python javascript everything has regular expressions so you can, so you basically you can install uh, the gnu commands with sigwin on windows and then suppose you're looking for the string random numbers in all your c file you can say grep grep is a command that means search for regular expressions and minus pins so minus p i n s options to the grep command and then this is a uh, second argument it says random dot numbers is a regular expression that you want to search in star dot c p means it's a Perl regular expression syntax i means uh, ignore case that means it doesn't really matter whether it's capital r or small r and n means print the line numbers and S means ignore errors while searching. Suppose some file is unreadable, just ignore it. So you can find all files and a line number where you all C files where which has a reference to random numbers. And grep is a command to use. So Unix command but it's available on Windows, widely on Windows. So let's look at regular expressions. Is there in Perl, Python, C, Java, Vim, Emacs? In C you need to install a library. Okay, so the syntax is dot means any character and a cap means a hat means beginning of a line dollar means end of a line and if you really want to put a new line you need to put a special character so backslash is a code for a special character backslash n means a new line and use a pipe or a bar to say or tom or jerry and then you can use parentheses to group uh, gr uh, group uh, regular expression so this means a followed by b or c followed by d and then square brackets is to say any any of the characters in the in, in between the square brackets so a to z a to z auto or hash character any of these characters will match exactly one of these should match and then you have cap square brackets with a cap that means a to z anything except a to z that's all about regular expressions and there's a lot more about extended regular expressions which you'll find on the internet so how do you search for example, you are searching for notes or exams, a file name, so you can say dir, and pipe means send the output of the dir command and pipe it to grep. So instead of saving the output, you can directly pipe it to the next command. Grep is the next command, minus pi, then you want to search for notes or exam, and any case, i. So any, any, fold, any file or folder that has notes in it or exam in the name will get printed. So suppose you are also looking for another example is dir slash s slash b dot dot means in a current folder search s b means as recursively and subfolders and bear means just print the names and you are looking for algorithm dot star notes or number dot theory dot double o so it will match file names like algorithm notes and number theory is good and dot star means any 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 set of characters so this is a Perl regular expression so every process in an environment in, in the operating system so environment is a basically a list of variable value pairs of strings so when you type set on windows prompt 
you will see all the variables so system drive c colon system root is c colon windows tmp is c colon tmp user is john and then if you use uh, the percentage sign around a string percentage temp percentage echo it will print evaluate uh, fill in the temp with the actual value of temp which is c colon backslash temp sometimes there are hidden spaces in environment you can't see them so for example if you have said temp equal to uh, c colon tmp space and you say rm minus rf rm means delete rf means forcefully remove everything recursively and you say percentage temp percentage slash star and then what happens is there's a invisible space you can't see it will delete more things than you expect to delete so you have to be careful with spaces that you can't see and then windows has a command called dusky it allows you to make shorten your names command names so you can say dusky ls equal to dir dollar star that means ls is, uh, is a abbreviation for shortcut for the dir command and whatever you give to ls will get filled in by dollar star so then you can say ls desktop dot ini and ls will become dir desktop dot ini so let's go a bit into processes so every process is connected to io streams and it has three streams zero is an incoming stream input text and one is the standard output and two is the the standard error so errors go on the standard error and uh, number one goes on standard output so usually the standard is a is a keyboard or some other program and the output is another program or your screen an error usually comes to the screen so you can see something going wrong or not and then how does windows find the command that you type in so it uses a variable called the path so path is a, is, a, is a semicolon on windows a semicolon separated list of folders in which you keep your commands to change the path you just say set path something c colon sigwin bin semicolon and percentage path means the old path so you are adding sigwin bin to the head of the path so any command in sigwin bin will be available the next time you type in a command so you can the thing is if you are repeating commands again and again you can actually make put it in a file and call it a batch file dot cmd or dot bat file and auto, auto means echo, echo off that means don't print anything on the screen just run the commands and then you can use rem to mean reminder or, or comment it's a comment that means you want to remind you something you don't want to show it to the user it's just a comment windows won't do anything just ignore it and you can say echo hello percentage user so when you run my bat it says echo john because percentage user happens to be john and uh, the new command cmd also allows double colon as a command and you can type in my or my dot cmd even my will actually print hello john so what are the tricks that are commonly to speed up your work and there is a program called c-link which is the best style completion for cmd you can find it on google search on google and if you want to call some uh, a unix command from a cmd it's, it's quite difficult but there's a hack to get it suppose you want to set my date to some date by calling the gnu date because the windows date will actually not really finish it'll probably give a prompt so what do you say for slash f delimiters no delimiters and double percentage means basically it's a it's in a script a in sig and this thing the red thing is a program you're calling sigwin bin date and this is the percentage year month date you're asking sigwin uh, gnu date to print the date as uh, percentage y md and it prints the date and then for loop will loop over the date and after the date is set it will put it in set the date my date to percentage percentage a so this a will be set to the output of sigwin date and that a will get assigned to date and uh, you can instead of sigwin you can use perl, perl bash or bash to do more complicated scripting if it's really complicated don't bother with cmd use bash and it's still more complicated use perl and it's still more complicated use a c program let's see what else you can do and cmd uh, cmd is something called a make link hard link it creates hard link so you can say c colon desktop to c colon users uh, username desktop so then next time you can actually just say cd desktop it will go to your desktop instead of having to find the long names 
So it basically allows you to shorten your amount of typing you do by giving short folder names to long ones. So let's see more useful tools that you need on Windows. One is Sigwin, Bash, Perl, GCC for compiling, Notepad++ or GVim or Emacs for editor. Of course you need Google Chrome because it's safe and it stops viruses from getting to your computer. And and Process Explorer is something that used to find uh, rogue processes on your computer or things that it shouldn't be running. And then use the Java Open JDK, not the Oracle JDK, because there are a lot of bugs and viruses come through Java to your PC and IE. So better not to be careful what you install. And then we'll use XAM, the web server. It runs on Windows. There's a d Winamp also. It doesn't work so well. And then we'll use Python 2.7. It's used by almost a lot of applications out here like Vim. And not a later version of Python because there's a big difference between the old Python and new one. And then you need things like VLC one by one. And just search on Google if you need to look it up. It's a fun view for image viewing. Code blocks is for the C plus the free C plus C debugger. Okay, thank you.